In the last video, we coded up the SSL bot in CTrader. In this video, I will show you how to download tick level data from CTrader, and we'll do some basic analysis in Python to find the best time for our bot to enter trades. We'll be using the market data extractor tool that I showed in episode 4, so you might want to check that out if you haven't seen that yet. Then we'll be making a few small tweaks to our bot in CTrader to make it trade at the exact time that we want. First, let me explain why we want to do this. Our robot currently trades at the close of the daily bar, which is just after 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're new to forex trading, you probably won't be aware that this is a time with the lowest liquidity, and the bid ask spreads can blow out up to 5 to 10 times the usual spread, which means you'll be paying 5 to 10 times the normal commissions. That's enough to turn a winning strategy into a losing one when you start trading live, which is why this small tweak is so critical. Let's dive in and you'll see what I mean. First, we need to make a few changes to the market data extractor. We want to change the time zone from UTC to Eastern Standard Time. This is required so we don't have to worry about any daylight saving changes. Then scroll over to this section here and change the semicolons to commas. And we're also going to add a spread column. Next, scroll down to the on tick section and copy and paste this line to add the spread. And we'll divide it by the symbol dot pip size to get the spread in pips. And let's format it to F1 for one decimal place. That's all we need to change, so let's build it and add an instance. Select one tick as the time frame and go to the backtesting tab. We need to change the settings here to use the tick data from server, and I'm just going to run it for October. Okay, that's all done, and there's our file in the download folder. Let's open it up to take a look. Cool, we now have the bid, ask, and spread for every tick in October. We can do some basic analysis here to see that the average spread on this pair is 1.7 pips, the minimum spread is 0.8 pips, and the maximum spread is 40.3 pips. And we can see that that occurred at 5.53 p.m. during that low liquidity period. Let's head over to Python now to take a closer look at this data. I'll just shorten the name of this file to make it easier to import into Python later. I'll be showing you a Python package called Plotly, which you can install by opening Anaconda prompt and typing conda install Plotly. Once that's installed, open up a Jupyter Notebook and create a new Python Notebook in the same folder as your data. First we need to import pandas as pd and we'll import the data into a data frame using df equals pd.readcsv and the name of our file. And we can use the df.head function to see the first five lines of the data. Then we're going to need to set the index column equal to date and put past dates equal to true to allow us to use some powerful time series functions. From 
For example, now we can use the df.resample function to change the time frame from ticks to 5 minutes by taking the average of each 5 minute bucket. Pretty cool, right? We can easily change the time frame to one minute or hourly, daily, weekly time frames using this function. But let's go with the one minute for now. Let's plot the data using df.plot. and you can clearly see the spikes in the spread each day. But the chart isn't that readable, so we want to change the plotting backend to use Plotly. And now we have a much nicer looking plot which is also interactive, so you can zoom in to take a closer look at the data. By default, it will plot every column in the data frame, so we can use df.spread.plot to just plot the spread. Now if we zoom into a particular day, we can see that the spread starts to rise from about 4.30pm, has a massive jump at 5pm and then comes back down slowly after 6pm. This is just for one day, but we can check if there's a consistent pattern by looking at the average over 30 days. And we can do this by grouping the data by hour and minute and taking the average. After grouping the data, we need to use the unstack function to be able to plot the groups. And we can also convert the chart to a bar chart to make it easier to read. And this is what the final output looks like. Each bar on this chart represents the average spread for each minute of the day. And we can see the same general pattern. Based on this chart, we probably want to enter trades around 4.30pm. But there is a trade-off here because our signal is based off the close price at 5pm. So you have half an hour for the price to drift and potentially reverse the signal. So you need to make a decision whether you just want the lower spread or you want to be closer to the signal. I've also downloaded a couple of other currencies into the same folder. And you can easily switch between them by changing the file name. So let's take a quick look at some of the other pairs. For the Euro USD, it's a similar story. The best time is generally around 4.30 p.m. For the Aussie Kiwi, it's a bit earlier, around 4.23 p.m. But interestingly, the spread drops significantly a couple of minutes before the close, so it might be worth trading this pair around 4.57 to 
to be closer to the time of the signal. For indices like the S&P 500, the spread is pretty consistent, so you can trade one or two minutes before the close, and you'll get an even lower spread if you trade before 4 p.m. And finally for Bitcoin, there is still a spike but it only lasts a few minutes. So you can trade 1 minute before the close or 10 minutes after the close. We managed to do some pretty powerful analysis here with just a few lines of code in Python. So hit the like button if you learned something new. I hope you can see how powerful Python is now and why you want it to be part of your toolkit. Now that we've worked out the best time to trade, let's head back over to CTrader and I'll show you the few simple tweaks we need to make. If we run the SSL bot from the last video, you'll see that the entry time is just after 9pm or 10pm UTC time, which is 5pm Eastern time. First, let's change the time zone to Eastern Standard Time. Then we need to change the on bar section to on tick. This is because on bar just runs once per day and you can't choose an intraday time to enter trades. Now this part might be a bit confusing, but because we want to trade before the bar closes, we need to check the signal on the current bar, so we change these indices to 0 and 1 here. This is because 1 means 1 bar ago and 2 means 2 bars ago. The last thing we need to do before executing a trade is to check the server time hour equal to 16. and the server time minute equal to 29 and also the positions.count equal to 0 so that there's no current positions on. And that's pretty much it. Now our bot will check for a signal half an hour before the close and enter the trade at 4.29pm when the spreads are lowest on average.